So what I've done is I've taken the SPJ file for the root folder that actually has these avoidance zones in here. Out of my root folder, I threw it in here. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and drag that in. So I'm gonna go take that SPJ file for my utilities, drag that in, and now you can see I've got those three or four different areas right there. So as soon as we're good there, all I have to do is come up here to my export tab, which is the in the top left, my export, which is a blue icon. And under the construction data tab, there's a machine avoidance zone exporter. In here, you simply just do the select points that you want. Okay, so once I have those selected right there that I want to just be the avoidance zones, you can see under the selection, I've got eight right there. Now all I gotta do is basically just go find where I wanna put it. So I'm gonna just come in here, but I'm gonna go straight to my project library on my USB drive. So I'm gonna go project library into my projects, and this is the Morgan L3 project. And I go past office data, but I stop here. You don't want to put it in with the designs. You want to put it here. And this is normally where there's a dot cal. But right here, I'm just going to call this utilities. And it'll actually add what I need after that. So I just call it utilities, hit save. Make sure you hit export. It writes it really fast. It's simple. And this is what it looks like on the actual project library. If you need to see that, just if you're curious in my project library under projects and I go back to my Morgan L3 right here past office data you got your designs your cpc cpz.cal and there's a utilities.avoid.svl so this is ready to go now what we'll do is go ahead and throw this into the machine and just simply import it real quick import files to machine from USB hit the next go ahead and just select your thumb drive so it's on the root hit select and right here, you let it bring in only the job site you want. I've got a lot of stuff in my project library, so I want to make sure that I only bring in the Morgan project. Hit import, let that go in real quick. Once we're imported, hit OK, and then just refresh the program. You'll notice that right off the bat, you've got an icon right there that shows kind of a, a rectangle. It looks like a stop sign. Go ahead and just reload. Make sure you're on design mode. And I'm going to pick my Morgan F finish grade for FG, Morgan finish grade there. Hit apply and I'm gonna get a little beep that warns me, hey, I've got avoidance zones in there. So right off the bat, you can see I've got some avoidance zones in there. And the avoidance zone distance, it's in the web interface where you change the distance. From whatever tip of the bucket you've got it on, my right or left is where it says how far I am away from that avoidance zone. So now that we're in the machine, we can see our avoidance zones on there. You can go ahead and pick up and as soon as you sick put out and get into that avoidance zone, boom, you'll get a warning that you've got an avoidance zone breached. And now just so you know, you can't turn that volume down from the actual operating screen. Any of these that you can see, you don't have to have in there the extra bigger area because right now the avoidance zone is set to zero on the distance in the web interface. If I did a bigger one, it would actually show you a bigger area. And sometimes that's annoying for the operators if all you're wanting to show them is these, these manholes and water valves. But then over here, if you truly were about to dig some utilities across right here, you would know I've got something pretty important in the ground and it's color coded in. So, Anyways, thank you for watching this video from Site Ticket or Mountain SiteWorks training videos on how to create avoidance zones in SiteWorks itself for the data collector and then how to export it to the machine.